I love drawing all these busy scenes. I love drawing scenes with people, uh, but I would not. I was telling Eleanor this before that I wouldn't have drawn at this spot because it is so packed with people and they would see me and I try to be inconspicuous when I'm drawing. So this is a good opportunity. Um, I also draw directly with ink, so I think it's important how I start. It's important where I go. Everything I draw adds up to the next thing I want to draw. And the starting point is always fun. So I like to start at an interesting point and then spiral outwards until I lose interest. And as I lose interest, I stop drawing. <laughs> and that makes it easy and doable and achievable. And it stays tuned to you know how I am and what I like or dislike, which is always a good thing. So I want to start this one with the, the people in the foreground on the left. So there are two of them, blurred faces. Uh, eating and drinking, and I'm going to start with them, and they're going to help me map out the rest of my scene. Usually, when I draw people live or from photos, I start from the ears, which is a funny spot, but I've really enjoyed doing this. So, Nishant, we already have the first question, and that is mm -hmm. uh, Monica's asking um, you to share to share your favorite tools if you find the time in between sure yeah so i always always like to draw with my lamy safari i started using this because i started writing with it i wanted to write a little slower than i could type so i bought a fountain pen and i started writing with that on real paper and then when i started drawing i started drawing with it and i absolutely love it so most of the drawings you'll see from me are made with a lamy safari uh, always straight with ink and the other things I use off late, I've started using more color in my work. So things have changed for me, but otherwise it's usually just one more fine liner, either for, uh, usually for the borders that I put. Um, so one pen and one fine liner for the most part. And I use the reverse side of my fountain pen nib to make fine lines like this. Mm. So I get three line widths, one, two, and three from using from having two things that are very easy to carry and can fit anywhere and be anywhere and i can start drawing anywhere so uh, I, this is my trusted toolkit that i recommend to everybody just find the thing that you are unafraid to use anywhere and you can always carry with you and be ready to draw in like a moment's notice or even just for a moment Nishant, your camera is like having a lot of trouble keeping a focus. Could you mm -hmm. maybe just like tap the drawing and see if it holds that? Okay, I'm trying to do that, but yeah, you're right. It's not doing a very good job. Uh, what can I do about this? Can I elevate my drawing in some way? Does it help? Hmm. If I'm closer to the screen, I have a big book of poetry. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll Google it while you're drawing. Yeah, I, I think you should. Um, I think the camera is trying to focus like between the height of your drawing hand and the paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, uh, that's already yeah. But I, I remember okay, so there was a trick to make make it focus. But don't worry, just keep <laughs> on. Yeah. Doing. Okay. So uh, once I've gotten to a couple of people, I start using them as reference for the rest of my scene. Everything I draw after this is in reference to this size and uh, this horizon line. So the most important line now to establish perspective, to get it out of the way so I don't have to think about it, is the railing. So I like to do that with clean and powerful lines. I also like to draw with long lines, as you can see. and. I like it because this gives my lines like a natural shape. Uh, it has improved how I see things. And uh, as you can see, I also don't obey borders between objects. I jump from one object to another, um, wherever the lines go, in a sense. And doing this has been really helpful to build my confidence with this approach and also to develop sort of a sense of style, which is uniquely my way to draw. So I've got these two lines now, and these two lines are the bench and the railing, and they are going to help me set everything else into perspective, and everything else is going to be now progressively uh, a little bit up till the horizon line, and then 
uh, trailing down from here. So by doing this, I don't need any more pencil lines, one line, two line, and everything else with rel uh, being relative to them means that I don't need my pencil. I can just always start drawing quickly and dive into my scenes before they get away from me. So this is something I recommend to everybody to start to break down your world into these lines that help you see everything else. This line I know has to be in between these of these two. So the angle is also in between these two heading into my uh, vanishing point. So now I just know that it has to be a little bit more tilted than this one above it. And the one below that has to be a little bit more. Yeah, I like this approach to perspective. It's a lot more intuitive than trying to make vanishing points and converging lines. Yeah, I think the main difference what I've realized is that when we try to draw, a lot of us try to draw in what we think is the right way. So the drawing has to be correct, quote unquote. And I think that's absolutely unnecessary and nobody should try to do waste their time trying to do that. I think the purpose of so the, the, like as an engineer, I learned these two words, which are very interesting the, to parse the difference between uh, there was accuracy and precision. And so accuracy is exactly how correct your drawing is, how exactly correct your perspective is. And precision is how consistent you are. So if you think about it as darts, how consistently you throw, you make the same mistake not how exactly well you get the best points. And I think as an artist, I've learned to relax and it has started working for me once I started going for precision rather than accuracy. Does that make any sense? Yeah, I like that dart analogy. Um, okay, so your focus was great and then it came back to doing that thing. Could you try bending the top of your paper back it might be trying to focus on that like the part that's sticking out towards the camera maybe that will help is this better um we'll we'll is see is this good right now <laughs> oh it always is... changes the focus when you move the hand so it's um mm. but should i, I like, maybe i should it... draw and come back <laughs> <laughs> no no just i, I, I think it, it's 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 fine. I would just keep on working. All right. Uh, so what's this one, this bench goes all the way. There are a few people here that I'm going to draw very quickly. If I see them in less detail, I draw them in less detail. I see them. I try to draw them exactly as I see them, not as I like to, to draw what you see, not what you know. I think that's another important difference between two words. That's really helpful. Definitely. Yes. Just really being fully present and like losing your expectations of what things should look like. Mm -hmm. And also a bit uh, to break it down really to at the level of shapes, like to not have to to know that to see the lines as they're going rather than to try to imagine this is what something that you're looking in front of you looks like and therefore this is how it should be drawn. So to not really see this as a bridge, because that makes it very difficult. Now you're thinking about all the bridges you've drawn badly before in your life. But to see <laughs> the it trauma, just as the these, bridge trauma. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah. So it's to see it just as this collection of lines that are going this way and that way. And there is this line that seems to be doing this thing. And maybe I'll make it do that. And then the line after that just has to obey this previous line. And again, as I spiral out from my point of interest, I lose interest. And so I'm allowed to be like, I don't care. I'll just do this quickly. I just want to tell you that, hey, there is stuff here. There are boats here, um, all kinds of things. There are buildings here. But I don't really want to show you the details of those things because they are not pertinent to my sketch. And so I don't spend too much time trying to detail them. Yeah, it's like how you things. naturally focus, how things look like from your eyes. You see that there's an object there, but you can't 
tell what all those details are. Exactly right. Yeah, I also hope you talk more about your approach to drawing figures when you come back to that part. Oh yeah, sure. So, uh, yeah, so I teach in my, when I, sometimes I give classes to people, uh, I tell them about this thing I do, which is I draw people at three levels of detail based on what they're doing, based on how far they are from me, based on how important they are to my scene and how interested I am in what they're doing. So there's something like this. There's a, a, a level of detail that is to my main subject. So I care about where the shadows fall. I care about the folds in their clothing. So uh, texture matters and fabric matters and things like this. Uh, attention is given. But as I move towards other subjects, such as here, such as here, they don't need a lot of detail because I don't want you to know too much about them. Um, I am a, I used to be an engineer, so I kind of think like that even now in terms of information. So when I think of a drawing, I think of uh, my job being that of filtering the reality and controlling what information I want to share and in what way. So that it is on, on the macro level, that is like colors, and whether you like to show all the lines, whether your perspective is correct, whether that's what you chose to draw at all. But on the micro level, it's also things like who gets who gets a nose, who gets eyes, who doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> so now at this point, I'm not. Uh, I know that there are things I need to finish. I can come back to them later. But I, uh, I I like to focus on again. Like I'm I'm pulled by the things that are interesting to me, and if I always draw in the order of what is interesting to me. Then even when my sketches are interrupted, say by a time limit or because I'm drawing outdoors, maybe things change, my subjects leave. I usually have a quote unquote finished sketch in the sense that I was mostly able to draw the things I wanted to pay attention to. So even if this sketch, for example, was stopped here right now, I think I already have a sense of where I am and what's happening. And well, some, I would have liked to add some details here, but otherwise I already know where I am. And at any point that this gets stopped, uh, it's like, it always has a meaning, the drawing. It always has a focus and it always has a subject. I think it's been about 12 minutes so far. Yeah, 12, maybe maybe a bit more, but yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we, we started oh. like at 20 past or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like I, should, but... I can slow down a bit then. <laughs> Are there any questions that I can answer? Maybe I can, I have enough time to like answer something um, that the there's not uh, right now there's not a question but a comment by emma and she's saying wonderful to see this demo um thank you for being here nishant so oh, just um, thank you emma. appreciation from the comments uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah please chime in in the chat if anyone has a question I, I think it's really interesting because correct me if i'm wrong but you do a lot of like one line techniques in your drawing mm -hmm. oh I yes think that's so, such a great tool to tie different elements together because they're connected by the same line absolutely right so long lines are really really important to me uh, they have helped me become an artist and i think it's absolutely crucial i tell everybody that if you're going to draw draw with long lines because uh, you know so writing is just uh, drawing is just like writing in the sense that you're using shapes and combinations of shapes to give meaning to things and to say things and to share things. And just like you have a handwriting, it's very difficult to force your to, to look like someone else's handwriting. Just that same way you have a distinct way that you make your lines. And the way uh, it's important to trust yourself to make those lines and it's important to to push with your long lines because they will always be different from anybody else's 
And this has been the way for me to find to, well, find is not the word, but to sort of develop what is now my style of drawing. My lines are very clearly and very definitely my lines. So long lines help me sort of connect different objects. They help me to, and by the, the act of connecting different objects that are not the same, what I do is I deconstruct them in my mind. It helps me to see the world as a construction of those lines and shapes rather than these, again, these objects that I recognize already. So I know what someone's hand should look like. And that makes me, that makes me less able to draw the hands that I see in front of me. And this is a good exercise when you're looking uh, and you are trying to translate that to paper and you don't change your line, you go with the same line. What happens is you make this business of this equation between your eyes and what goes down on the page. You learn to sharpen that and you have a lot of bad drawings along the way. But by doing this, you put yourself through a process where you are constantly feeding into this system and you're constantly learning more and you're becoming more confident about where your lines take you. So when I see perspective and I draw perspective, there is less difference than that used to be before. Very important if you're going to do ink drawings like me, or if you're drawing at places where everything changes in 10 minutes. Okay, so now I just have this background left. Um, I have at previous occasions chosen to leave the drawing right here. I try to find uh, what I call natural frames. So objects in my scene that help me frame my piece, my subject and areas of interest. Lampposts are helpful. So one stylistic choice might be to leave it here. So the border of the, the bridge and everything else ends at this lamp post with the simple idea being that well you know what that it goes on so i don't have to draw it and <laughs> it's not the point so we can just move on and uh, assume that the rest of the bridge exists and everybody is, driving on it is safe <laughs> uh, yeah i love i'm really enjoying finding natural frames in my work there's so so fun to like just design that the white space of the page versus the filled in mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. So I might I might stop this here, but just to emphasize that we are at this pier and that like some, uh, my my foreground elements still need a little bit more uh, detailing. So I'll give it a few moments, but otherwise I think I'm done with this drawing. I might use my uh, fine liner, the thicker fine liner to border my subjects. This is something I do just to help uh, something pop out that's important to me. In this case, I might have left it like this, but otherwise she or well, they are my subjects drinking something and I give them a border so they stand out mm. and having a conversation. But they didn't get noses. <laughs> they did not get noses because, again, so uh, that's not what's important. What is important about them? I'm also uh, I did not draw this the background here. I could kind of do it very quickly, uh, just for the sake of completion, um, sort of to wrap up this underside of this drawing, this bridge. Mm -hmm. Again, a long line is useful. You can just uh, do say a lot of things quickly with it and it is implied that there are details here that have not been explored yeah it still gives you that sense of vancouver skyline <laughs> um 
Oh yeah, someone was asking, might you put the horizon line under the bridge? Oh, never mind. <laughs> and then there's and another question. Yeah, there's another um, question. Claudia says, I like your drawings. Just one question. Why do you leave out feet? That's a, <laughs> I do that a lot. <laughs> I think, uh, so this is some, I don't always do it. I do draw feet sometimes when the occasion calls for it. Um, let me see some recent uh, drawings that are relevant. But I, it's just part of the overall idea that I don't want to draw what I don't want to draw. And if I am bad at drawing something, I lean away from it. If I'm good at drawing something, I lean into it, which is something all of us do. And these, uh, what you lean into, what you lean away from, what you dislike, what you're not able to do, these are the things that are unique about you. And these are the things that are represented through your art, hopefully. And then your art becomes unique because it is representing you. So I don't have a very good reason. My reason is just that I just do what I want. And I try to stay tapped into that. And that means that I don't draw a lot of feet. Uh, sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. It's arbitrary. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't draw, even draw legs at all. It's... Uh, just something that I allow to happen the way it does. And that is the general idea of how my art has evolved. Just letting uh, my mood be valid, letting my uh, ideas of, can I get away with that? Can I get away with this? And seeing how they pan out. Mm, I remember this one. Oh yeah, we drew this together yeah. in Seattle. I think the lack of feet really has... Um... Like it makes your silhouettes very distinctly nishant. They're like cuter for the lack of feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, yes. So the hands are also sort of rounded uh -huh. otherwise. So they do have this cute Powerpuff Girls appearance. I did grow up watching Powerpuff Girls. So maybe there's some kind of something I'm taking from there. These are definitely Powerpuff Girl feet. Hmm. I'll have to look up how they do. Oh yeah, they're oh, kind of just stumps. Yeah but, yeah, but that's a very nice reference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so shoes, but uh, nothing else. Um, so in thinking in terms of information, every drawing has to have a reason. And even if that reason is arbitrary, you should pick a reason, even if it has no basis in, you know, why. And once you do that, like, so I want to show just this bunch of people who were in front of me. That was the subject of my drawing. If I could write it in words, it would be, I want to draw the people in front of me. These were the people in front of me, nothing else matters. So I did not draw anything else. And I wanted to draw the view out of the window and halfway through the drawing, I realized I don't really want to draw anything inside the cafe and it's going to take me too much time. There was a storm warning, so we needed to go back. So this was the quick way to do the drawing that I'll just draw what's outside and I won't look at anything else. Yeah, that framing. Similar decisions here. Why not? There was a bank here that I did not draw. Uh, there were more cars that I did not draw. Bare trees that I just ignored. There's a lot of filtering and I have to own up to my filtering. That's the point of, you know, trying to trying to show people why, why me. Mm -hmm. But that's such a smart thing to do. I, I often come across sketches who say but I shouldn't I have drawn more shouldn't I have drawn or they have like the idea that they should be drawing everything that they see because they're urban sketchers mm -hmm. and they are making a true record of what they see mm -hmm. but yeah that's kind of not the point you're not a camera you're exactly like a and there, there is there is power in not being a camera in trying to chase that idea that I'm, I should be a camera or a human camera whatever that might mean that is uh, sort of subjugating yourself to this false ideal that you don't need to have. I think it's great that you're not a camera and it's excellent that you can not see everything and record everything. That is a superhuman power. Any machine can record everything. What's the point of trying to do that? I think this, this filter and trying to not to focus on what, what interests you, this is what makes it a wholesome experience for me. And I like to think that I am the master of this page. This universe is mine. I get to define gravity. I get to define physics. I get to define facial details. So all of this is in my control. And that's a nice 
psychological uh, mindset when you're approaching a page. Yes, thank you so much. There are some uh, questions in the chat. Emily is asking, do you always use this size sketchbook? Um, I always change after I use one sketchbook. Uh, I'm just finishing up this one, which is a Stillman and Burn. I am also meanwhile drawing tiny people in a square sketchbook, which is really nice because I can hold it like this in public and it's, you know, I can stand with it and draw quite easily. And this has only tiny people drawing. So these are quick drawings made sometimes standing, sometimes sitting somewhere and people passing by my world. So 10, 15, 20 second drawings. I like to have a smaller sketchbook. Uh, this is my first sketchbook that I'm exploring with color. And these are all experiments for the first time. All of them made me very, very afraid. But it's a tanned uh, brown page sketchbook. And I've enjoyed finishing this. Other than that, usually it's this size or it's this size. My next sketchbook is also the same size. And yeah, I, I like to change because I think uh, how you're looking at your scene. So, you know, if you're drawing vertically and you're looking, uh, let's look at something like that. So if you're looking vertically, the way you frame something, the way you find interesting things, the, the direction you go with your eyes, when you're, whether you're scanning the page this way, whether you're scanning the page this way, this is uh, as interesting for the artist as it is for a viewer. So changing that to draw in a different orientation is very useful and you should uh, keep changing things in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Uh, we have some more uh, comments in the chat. Emma is saying, I love the pieces that feature continuous lines juxtaposed with the stylized hatches. It feels spontaneous with intentionality. I agree. <laughs> That's a great way to put that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for this wisdom and drawing demo. Yes, thank, <laughs> thank you, you for, for having me. Sean.